It'll be 25 people. people. And uh, we're here for the chapel service tonight, so we're glad everybody's here. Uh, we're going to play some music, and I've asked a friend of mine to, to speak a little bit for a few minutes and do a little Bible teaching for us tonight. But we're just glad to be here. Glad to see other human beings, you know, people, you know, it's nice to see a group of people. So we're going to play a few songs together. We'll start out with prayer. Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for blessing all of our lives. We thank you for our health and the good health of our family. And we just ask that you bless us and keep us, Lord, in your care and your protection. And we know you have awesome plans for each one of our lives. So we just thank you for this time we have together with our friends here tonight. In Jesus' name, amen.
just thinking as we were singing that song, you know, a merry heart does good like a medicine, right? Yeah. That's what the, that's what the Bible says. You know, a merry heart does good like a medicine. And sometimes, you know, one of the, a good cure for being sick is just to laugh a lot. Yes. <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah. You know, just to laugh and, yeah. and, you know, be up in your spirit. Right. And you feel better right away, you know, yeah. and you're part of the healing thing. You know? Okay, we are, uh, we're, we're broadcasting, uh, this will be broadcast from our, you, on our YouTube channel probably, so we're filming it tonight, and so we broadcast from a place called Sunshine Mountain, and uh, that's, that's in Spray River, Oregon, it's up on a, a mountain, and uh, we all live in that little neighborhood there, we've got a family that came with us, and so, yeah, this, this song is called Sunshine Mountain. If we can remember how to do Before. 
No? Okay. Well, I haven't either, but there are a number of people in our church out in Spring River that have, and they tell me that um, sheep need guidance. Sheep need leadership. They need direction. And so um, I'm going to turn real quick to Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6, where he's speaking of prophesying about Jesus, what Jesus would do on the cross for us. Let me read this to you real quick. It's pretty amazing. He said, Pardon me. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord have laid on him the iniquity or the sin of us all. Um, we like sheep. We've chosen our own way. God gave us the freedom to choose which way we wanted to go. He gives us that choice every moment of every day. It's pretty amazing that God loves us that much that he would choose to do that, to make us with the ability and the freedom to choose. And here it says that we all, that includes me, my kids, my pastor, his wife, all of us have chosen our own way at one point or another, and we need a shepherd. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. King David the second king of Israel, he wrote um, Psalm 23. How many of you have heard of Psalm 23 before? It's, the Lord is my shepherd. Think that's good. Let me read that real quick to you. For those who have not maybe heard it before. Psalm 23. It's called the shepherd's psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, leads me beside the still waters, he restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23. In there it says, the, the Lord, the Lord is my shepherd. Now see, when, when we're choosing to go our own way, we're, we're choosing to be our own shepherd. It's not a good thing. It never comes out very well. <laughs> I can attest to that. My kids can attest to that. When we choose our own way, when we have all gone astray, we choose to be our own shepherd. It's not good. In fact, um, Jesus, on a number of occasions, when he was here on earth, when he was dealing with the people of Israel, um, there were a number of times where he says, it's recorded for us, that the people were like sheep without a shepherd. They were, they were choosing to go their own way. In fact, their spiritual leaders weren't helping the situation. But that's a whole other topic. We won't go there right now. But the fact is that Jesus said in John chapter 10, I am the good shepherd. And so when we allow the Lord to be our shepherd, through Jesus, God the Son, and God the flesh, He gives us that direction. Now, a shepherd, think about it with me. So you've got these sheep, okay? They, um, as I've been told by the people in our church that raise sheep, yes, they need direction. You have to show them where to eat. You have to show them where to drink. You have to show them the way to go. Some of them use sheep dogs. It's an awful lot of fun to watch. But sometimes they need restoration, too. Sometimes those little sheepy go astray. I don't know if you've gone astray. I have at times. <laughs> Never comes out well. But when what happens is, as we're reading in Psalm 23, notice the benefits. Let me go back to that real quick. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. That means that he knows the best things for each one of us, and he gives it to us. Maybe it's not what we want, that's what we're going to need because he's a good shepherd. If Jesus is the good shepherd, he's not going to give us something that's bad for us. Okay? And so he's going to get those things that nourishes our soul. And we get nourishment through God's word. Pick it up and read it. Even if it's just a verse, God can speak to you through that little bit. Just that little bit. And then it says that he 
leads me beside the still waters. He doesn't say, here you go, get some water from this waterfall here and get swept over. No, he doesn't do that because he's the good shepherd. He takes care of us. And, you know, the Bible also tells us in Ephesians that we're washed by the water of the word. As we read God's word, God will speak to us and he'll say, wait a minute, you're going off course. You're going the wrong way. And that's where he brings that still water, that peace. In fact, it says you'll be led, go out with joy and be led forth with peace in Isaiah. And so, so he gives us those things that are good for us, that nourish us on the inside. And then it's because it says there, he restores my soul. He refreshes us. And then it says, he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He's not going to just say, okay, here you go, figure it out. No, he gives us direction. Again, through God's word, the Bible, he can give us direction about what we should do each day. And then here's the, you know, right now, obviously, we're going through a really weird time in our nation. And this is the part I really wanted to focus on today. God gives us hope in the middle of this weirdness. Let's just put it that way, weirdness. Um, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And see, the Lord, as the shepherd, the shepherd in the Bible times, he would have two objects. He would have a rod, which was kind of like a stick or kind of like a club a little bit. And then he would have the staff. You know, you see a picture of a shepherd that's kind of got that crook neck thing on there. And what happens when those little sheep go astray, say they're in some bramble bushes over here, he can reach with that staff, sweep it right out, and save it, rescue it. And see, that's the other job of the shepherd, is to bring restoration. Teach one of us. He wants us to have restoration. And so the, his rod and his staff, they not only rescue, but sometimes there has to be correction. Have you guys sometimes felt corrected? Like, oh my goodness, I knew I did wrong, and now I'm having a consequence for it. That, that staff, the, the rod, pardon me, brings the correction. Um, my old pastor used to say that it, um, when the, as an example, when the sheep would go astray and it continued to happen, he'd take that little sheep and he'd sweep its legs and break its legs. It's like, well, that's rather harsh, but then he would pick it up and he would carry it on his shoulders and he would speak tenderly to it. And so that sheep would get really familiar with the shepherd's voice. And so when it's amended, he could put it down and it would wander away again. God wants us to know that even if we're going through hard times, maybe because we've chosen, I don't know, I've done that. God chooses to restore us. He restores us. And that's why his broad and the staff, though it looks like, oh, that could hurt, it's a comfort because we know that he loves us. God loves us that much. And then he also says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. And so God chooses to bless us abundantly, even when there's weird things going on. Believe me, we're blessed just visiting you guys. You wouldn't think so, because what are you guys doing coming from Spray River, way out in the boonies? <laughs> Because God loves us, and because He loves us, we love you. And we are blessed to be able to be here. And then He ends with, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And when we allow the Lord to be our shepherd, when we say, Jesus, I want you to be my Lord and my Savior, lead me. You know, He gives us that place with Him forever. And it's a promise. Pastor Ron, this, um, for today, we got to broadcast our sermon, his sermon rather, on um, YouTube, which was the first for us, you know, little spring we were out in the boonies, <laughs> we got to be high tech, but that was one thing that Pastor Ron wanted to assure everyone, is that he gives us these promises, he gives us the assurance that we can have peace. So, I wanted to make it very simple for you. In Romans chapter 10, Actually, let me just pause real quick. John chapter 10, where Jesus says that he is the good shepherd. In John 10, verses 27 through 30, let me just read that to you real quick. It says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, 
and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. So the shepherd, the sheep know the shepherd's voice, the shepherd know his sheep. There's that relationship. God wants that relationship with each one of us. And if you, if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, praise God. Praise God. Thank Him for His peace and for His presence. Thank Him for that relationship. If you don't know Jesus, in John, uh, pardon me, Romans chapter 10, He makes it very simple for us. Pardon me, just real quick here. It says, The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, or that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes to righteousness. That's that right standing with God. You can never do it on your own. Never. Not one of us. But that's what, it's the gift of God. God gives us that right standing through Jesus. And so we know that um, it's that simple that we believe in our heart that we confess with it, our mouth that Jesus is not just a man, but that he is God, that we'll be saved. So I would like to do what our pastor always does. I want to give you the opportunity. If you don't know Jesus, I want you to know him. I want to give you the opportunity. So go ahead and close your, close your eyes, bow your heads, and just pray with me, Okay. This is no magic formula. It's just the attitude of your heart. If you want to know Jesus as your shepherd, as your Savior, just go ahead and pray with me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you that you rose from the dead on the third day, just like your word promised. Save me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for your promise that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for filling me. In Jesus' name, amen.
Anybody want to go to heaven? And you know, most people said, yeah, I want to go to heaven. I asked people, do you, anybody want to go to hell? And a couple people raised their hands, you know. And I thought, wow, do they have any idea what that place is going to be like, you know. It's not going to be fun, you know. People make fun of it. But uh, this song's called, Don't You Want to Go There? And it uh, really makes a lot of sense. In heaven, yes. <laughs> Not to the other place.
each one of us. And you know, no matter what's going on in your life, in your mind, uh, what kind of things are happening today, you know, God has a plan for your life. That's, that's you know, that's good news, a good plan for your life. And he says he knows the thoughts he thinks to you or toward you, thoughts of good and not of evil. And you know, God has a plan, and I think it's good good to know that God cares about each one of us, he has a plan for us, and that he's working this plan out. No matter what we're going through in our life, he's gonna work it out for good. Romans 8 28 says, All things work together for good for those who love God and serve him according to his purposes. So God's working a plan through each one of our lives. You know, uh, we never know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know, you know, we don't have any, uh, uh, the only guarantees we really have is to know that God loves us and if we choose to believe in him, we have everlasting life. We're going to be with him in glory one day. Other than that, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow in this world, do we? We have, we have no idea. But we can know that God is with us. That he's going to help us through. That he's going to walk right there beside us. And I think that's such great news. So this is a song about heaven. And this will probably be our last song. I think we're good. Okay.
Oh, yeah, we can do this one. You guys probably know this song. What a friend we have in Jesus. And that's right. What a friend we have in Jesus. What am I supposed to do now? I have to go on again. You know? Maybe Tim knows. I'll be four. Okay, Tim. What are we playing here? Okay, go for it. Well, we'll figure it out. Okay. Thank you. 
with you guys. It's about that time, I think. We go on all night.